Okay. Here's a notational thing. Um, the area, here's an unpleasant way to write it. You take the determinant of the matrix with these vertical bars. Now these vertical bars look like absolute value bars. But guess what? They don't act like absolute value bars. It's the determinant matrix. It's the, it's the delimiters for a determinant. Instead of the round parentheses or a square bracket, we put these guys. But it could be negative. And then that's how you could write it. That's just terrible. You're using these two identical notations for two different things. And that's one reason I don't particularly like the vertical bar notation. Um, that's why this sometimes is preferable. Let's see what timer, timer on here. OK. And um, so that's another way to write this. OK. All right. Well, I'm over 10 minutes anyway, so I'll keep going for a little bit and then um, then take a break and make it another segment. OK. So um, that's a story about about area. Let me just show you one other thing to justify that this might be true. OK. I haven't really shown you that that A1, B2 minus A2, B, B1 formula is true. But let me give you uh, one more, well, two more examples. Certainly, pat, b beyond a square, a rectangle is a pretty good example. And that would be, um, let's say, a comma zero, zero comma b, oriented so that that going from the a vector to the b vector is counterclockwise. And here, the determinant of a zero, zero b is a b. That's the, the area of the rectangle, and it's even positive because it's pro positively oriented. OK, that's great. Well, let's actually get to a, a parallelogram example. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rectangle and modify it to be a parallelogram in a very particular way. I'm going to we'll do what's called a shear. I'm going to take this, and I'm imagining it's like a stack of books. And I'm just going to push the top books over and make it into a parallelogram where the, the base is exactly the same. And the height is exactly the same. But now this vector is some other vector. It's like maybe, um, what is it now? It's now B1, B2. OK, and that, that was B2. OK. And now what's the determinant going to be? It's still going to be A0 and then B1, B2. Well, we know what happens to a, a, with a parallelogram. If we know the base and the height, that's what's special about this parallelogram. Because it's still got one of its sides along an axis, it's easy not only to calculate the base, but about, about the height. That wouldn't be true if it was all rotated in a crazy way. That'd be much, much more of a pain to do. But um, this guy, the area should still be A times this number B2. And that's exactly what you get here, AB2 minus 0. So that tells you that we're really on the right track here. It, it's, we've got enough evidence that it, it'd be really hard for this formula to really be a false formula. It'd be very hard for me to be pulling the wool over your eyes with all the evidence we've got. And in fact, when we come back to this, these will be most of the elements of a proof that that formula is exactly the area uh, of a parallelogram. OK, that's a good place to start this.